In this Learn Electrics video, we will explore Ohm's Law and Power Law. They are so very useful. They can quickly and accurately help you to choose the right size breaker, for example, work out diversity, and lots more if you know how to manipulate the numbers. Ohm's Law is probably the most taught formula in the electrical trade. Together with Power Law, it is essential that we know how to use it. There are always lots of questions about Ohm's Law and power calculations. How do we use Ohm's Law? How does the power triangle work? Can we combine the triangles together? If I know just two values, can I work out the others? And many more interesting questions. You are probably familiar with the triangle shape that shows either Ohm's Law or Power Law. And we use the triangle shape to tell us the type of calculation that we need to do. Let's look at this beginning with Ohm's Law. Any two known values will give us the third unknown number. Just move the known values out of the triangle and the position that they are in will tell you the calculation. For instance, if we know the voltage V and the current I, they are one over the other, V over I. This is a divide calculation. The same process if we know the voltage and resistance. We have V over R another division. This just leaves I and R to look at. When we move these out of the triangle, they are on the same line, so they cannot be a division. They are a multiplication operation. I times R will give us the volts. So we have V over I, V over R, and I times R. We've used V, I, and R in the triangle, but some people prefer to use the alternative symbols of V, A, and ohms. It matters not, whichever way you've been taught is all the same. Volts, current and resistance is just the same as volts, amps and ohms. Looking at power law next, you will see that we use this triangle in a similar way. If we know any two values, the formulas will give us the unknown third value. P is over V, so P divided by V equals I. On the other side, P over I, or P divided by I, gives us the unknown voltage. That leaves us with V and I on the same level. So this is a multiplication. V times I is P for power. Again, there are alternative symbols that can be used. W, V and A. Power, volts and current is the same as watts, volts and amps. Just use whichever system you've been taught and feel comfortable with it. Now we can look at the power matrix as I call it. This matrix combines the two triangles together, which means that if you know any two values, we can easily calculate the other two. We can show you this in action. We'll work through all the calculations so that you fully understand what to do, and we will give you some examples at the end to make your own calculations. And of course, they all have worked answers as well. This is the power matrix. So how does it work? And we will leave a link in the description to this video that will take you to the printable PDF of this matrix. Look at the leftmost two columns. These are the two values that we do know. Find the correct pairing, the two that you know, and then look along that row to locate the two calculations that are needed to find the two unknown values. Using the top row, for instance, if we know the voltage and current, the matrix tells us how to calculate the resistance and the power, and so on. Let's look at each section in detail now. We will do each calculation and show you the solutions. Pause the video where needed and follow the calculations. This is the best way to learn. For this first part, we will use the same numbers, the same data for each calculation. Shown here are the four values for power, voltage, current and resistance. They will not change. If the calculations are correct, we should always get the same answers, regardless of where we start. Begin with the voltage column. There are three possible calculations, depending on what we already know, and each calculation will always give us the same answer of 10 volts, regardless of which pair of numbers we start with. Pause the video and take your time looking at the calculations. For instance, if we know the current and resistance, the matrix tells us that V equals I times R. And putting the numbers to this from the table, 5 amps times 2 ohms, is 10 volts. If we know the current and power, then P over I is the calculation. 
50 watts divided by 5 amps is 10 volts, and so on. Let's bring the current column into view now. Again, there are three ways of calculating the current in the circuit, depending on which two values you already know. Pause the video and follow the calculations through. And then, there is the resistance to find. Three possible ways again. Decide which values you already know and follow the correct calculation. Pause the video and work through the examples shown. This is the best way to learn. All the calculations are based around the four values that we gave you a couple of slides ago. Lastly, we have the power column. Three ways to calculate power depending on which values you know. Work your way through each calculation so that you fully understand the maths behind the answers. Time to test yourself now. We've got five exercises for you to practice on. All have different values and different answers, and all can be worked out by using the power matrix. There are other ways to arrive at the answer, but this is the method that we are using here. Example 1 gives us the power in a circuit and the voltage in the circuit. It asks us to complete the table by finding the current flowing and the resistance. We are given P and V in the question. All that we need to do is to look down the leftmost two columns and find voltage and power. Look along the row and there are the two formulas that we need. Pause the video now and attempt the question before looking at the answers on the next slide. Using the formula I equals P divided by V, we have 125 watts divided by 25 volts and our answer should be 5 amps. The second part of the question asks us to find the resistance. V squared over P is the calculation to use. V squared is just V times V. V is 25 volts and P is 125 watts. So we have 25 times 25 divided by 125. That's 625 divided by 125 and an answer of 5 ohms. Example 2 gives us the current I and the resistance R. We must find the power and voltage. The first thing to do is to find the correct row in the matrix. Our two known values are current and resistance. Pause the video and find the answer. These are fairly easy calculations. Voltage is 10 amps times 2 ohms, which is 20 volts. And power is the current squared times the resistance, which is 10 squared times 2. So, if 10 squared is 10 times 10, then the calculation should be 10 times 10 times 2, which is 200 watts. Example 3 asks us to find V and I, if we already know P and R. So start by finding the correct row in the matrix, and then make the calculations. Pause the video and answer the question before looking at the answer. These calculations involve the use of square roots and you will need to use a calculator. You will need to know your calculator, especially in an exam. Many will use different key sequences. For the voltage, we need to find the square root of 5290 watts times 10 ohms. This then is the square root of 52,900. With some calculators, the numbers are entered as square root key and then 52900. And with the other calculators, the data is entered as 52900 and then the square root key. Have a practice until you find the method that works for your calculator. The answer should be 230 volts. The same rules apply for finding the current I. This time it's the square root of 529, which is 23 amps. It looks complicated, it isn't. Now for example 4, find I and R if we are given the values of P and V. This should sound familiar, it's one of the most frequent questions asked when choosing fuse and circuit breaker sizes. What size fuse do we need if we only know the wattage of an appliance and the working voltage? Pause the video and have a go. The answers are shown here. I, the current, is 11.5 amps and the resistance R is 20 ohms. A nice easy one, and knowing that the calculation of current is equal to the power 
divided by the voltage will be so useful to you in the workplace. Power divided by volts equals current. And now example 5. And this is not a trick question. If we are told that the voltage is 1 volt and the resistance is 1 ohm, the question asks us to calculate the power P and the current I. Pause the video and calculate your answer. Using the matrix, the current I is 1 amp and the power P is 1 watt. It's useful to know that when 1 volt causes 1 amp of current to flow through 1 ohm of resistance, then 1 watt of energy or power is produced. A quick recap then. Making calculations with Ohm's law or power law are expected skills in any electrical trade or industry exam. These are easy marks towards an exam pass. Learn how to make the calculations. They are simple calculations to make when you know how, but if you don't practice, they will always look complicated. The triangles are easy to use and easy to remember, and they will show you the formula to use. They are so easy to learn. Practice really does make perfect. The power matrix combines the two triangles into one easy calculation so that any value can be found just by knowing any two of the others. And don't forget, we will leave a link in the description to this video that will take you to a printable PDF of the matrix. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can always type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.